and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the multiple choice section of the 2022 Higher Paper. A link to this paper can be found in the description box below. Question 1 is looking at your knowledge of bonding. Here we can see that we're looking for an element with covalent bonding. This means that the element must be a non-metal, so we can eliminate sodium. There is bonding present in the molecule, therefore it has to be non-monatomic, so we can eliminate neon. And it also has to have London dispersion forces, which means it must be a molecule and not a network. Therefore, we can eliminate boron and sulfur will be your answer. Question two is linking together ionisation energy to the structure of atoms. We're looking to find the most stable ion formed. To do this, we need to look at where the biggest jump in ionisation energy is. This is between the second and third ionisation energy. This means that the third electron must be being removed from a stable full electron shell. Therefore, the 2 plus ion is the most stable ion. Question 3 is looking at the processes involved when boiling molecular substances. When you are boiling molecular substances, you are breaking the intermolecular forces between the molecules. You are not breaking the covalent bonds within the molecules themselves. The higher the boiling point, the stronger the intermolecular forces will be. Therefore, the answer will be C, that the van der Waals forces in HCl are stronger than the van der Waals forces in hydrogen. Question 4 is looking at reducing agents. Reducing agents cause reduction. To do this, they themselves are oxidised and therefore lose electrons. If a substance loses electrons, then this means that it has a low electronegativity, meaning that B will be the answer. For question 5, we're looking for the correct redox equation for the reaction of iron 2 with acidified dichromate. Acidified dichromate is an oxidising agent, therefore the Fe2 plus ions will be oxidised to Fe3 plus ions. We can eliminate A and C from the options. We now need to have a look at the charges and make sure they are balanced, as everything else in the equations is correct. For B, we have 14 plus on the reactant side and 9 plus on the product side. For D, we have 24 plus on the reactant side and 24 plus for the products. Therefore, D is the answer. Question 6 is testing your knowledge of writing formulae. You have a mixture of magnesium bromide and magnesium sulfate. Magnesium bromide has the formula MgBr2, whereas magnesium sulfate has the formula MgSO4. If you have 4 moles of bromide ions, then you must have 2 moles of magnesium ions within that compound, as there is a 2 to 1 ratio. There are 3 moles of magnesium ions overall, therefore there is 1 mole of magnesium ions which came from the magnesium sulphate. As there is a 1 to 1 ratio, there is then 1 mole of sulphate ions. For question 7, we are naming esters. For esters, the first part of the name comes from the alcohol group. This is on the side where there is the C single bond oxygen. Here this is propyl. The second part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid, the side with the C double bond O, in this case pentanoate. Therefore, this ester is propyl pentanoate. For question 8, we're trying to find which of these is not an isomer of the compound. The best way to start this is to find what elements are present in the compound. We have C8H16O. This follows the general formula CnH2NO. The general formula CnH2NO is the same as the general formula for all aldehydes and ketones. Therefore, we can have a look at the answers and see if there are aldehydes and ketones present. We can see that A, B and D are all aldehydes and ketones. Therefore, C is not an isomer of the compound as this is an alcohol. Question 9 is looking at functional groups. Here we've circled the carboxyl group. This compound also contains NH2, which is an amine group. Therefore, A, amine and carboxyl are the two functional groups present. Question 10, we're looking at the reactions of this molecule with bromine solution and hot copper 2 oxide. Bromine solution will decolorize when it is reacted with carbon to carbon double bonds. This molecule contains a carbon to carbon double bond and therefore will react with bromine solution. Hot copper 2 oxide will react with the primary alcohol group also found in this molecule. Therefore C will be the answer. The iodine number of an oil is the mass of iodine in grams that will react with 100 grams of oil and is a measure of the degree of unsaturation. The higher the iodine number, then the more unsaturation that there is. Olive oil has an iodine number of 84 and palm oil has an iodine number of 48. 
This means that palm oil has less carbon to carbon double bonds and is therefore more saturated than olive oil. Because it is more saturated, it can pack closer together and have stronger van der Waals forces. This means that it will have a higher melting point than olive oil. This means that B will be the answer. Question 12 is looking at detergents. Detergents have a similar but slightly different structure to soaps, however their mode of action is the same. The head section of a detergent is polar and therefore hydrophilic, so will dissolve in water. The tail section is non-polar and hydrophobic and will dissolve in oil. This means that B will be the answer. Question 13 is looking for a secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohols have their hydroxyl group somewhere along the chain but not at a branch point. Let's draw out each of the molecules. For A, we have 2-methylbutanol. This has a branch, but it also has the hydroxyl group on number one. We have 2-methylbutanol. This has a branch and the hydroxyl group at the same point, making it tertiary. Butanol has the hydroxyl group on number one, making it primary. And butanol has the hydroxyl group on number two, making it secondary. Question 14 is looking at the properties of some molecules. We're looking at water and oil solubility. For water solubility, we're looking for polar groups, such as OH groups, and for oil solubility, carbon to carbon bonds. Vanilla and ginger both contain OH groups and are therefore water soluble, where cucumber and orange are oil soluble. Question 16 is testing your knowledge of using equipment. When you rinse a burette, you should rinse it with a little of the substance that you're going to use within the burette, in this case acid, so we can eliminate answers B and D. When you fill the burette, you always fill to above the scale and then you'll drain some of it out and then you need to read your burette from the bottom of the meniscus. Question 17 is looking at chromatography. We're trying to separate lycopene and beta carotene. For using chromatography, we need to have both of these substances be soluble in the solvent that is used. Both of these substances are non-polar, therefore the solvent that we need to use must also be non-polar. Looking at the options, we have ethanol, which contains a hydroxyl group, pentane, which has only carbon to carbon single bonds, propanoic acid, which has a carboxyl group, and water, which also has OH bonds. Therefore, pentane would be the most suitable solvent. For question 18, we're looking at reaction rates. Here you've been given a concentration, which you need to read on the graph. This will then give you a rate of reaction. We need to work out time, which is 1 divided by rate. So if we take the value that we've read from the graph and do 1 divided by that value, we'll get 250 seconds. Question 19 is looking at molar volume and comparing volumes. If we have 100 centimetres cubed of butane and we're reacting in excess oxygen, we would need to use 600 centimetres cubed of oxygen. This would give a total reactant volume of 700. If we have 100 centimetres cubed of butane, we'll get 400 of carbon dioxide and 400 of water, giving a total product volume of 800. This means that the products have 100 centimetres cubed more volume than the reactants. Question 20 is looking at equilibrium. If you were to add NaCl to this equilibrium, it would have no effect. If you were to add HCl, you're adding in H plus ions. This would push the equilibrium to the reactant side. If you add NaOH, you're adding OH minus ions. These will react with the H plus ions, removing them and therefore pushing the equilibrium to the product side. Adding sodium methanoate would add ethanoate ions, pushing the equilibrium to the reactant side. Question 21 is looking at potential energy diagrams. All of the diagrams have the reactants at 30, which is where they should be. The activation energy for the forward reaction was 110, therefore the height of the hill should be at 140, which is D. Question 22 is a Hess's Law question. The enthalpy change to go from W to Z is the same regardless of the pathway taken. To go directly from W to Z is negative 210. However, you can go from W to X to Y to Z. We are missing the y to z pathway. We can write an equation to calculate what this would be. 
If we rearrange this equation, then we find that the y to z pathway is negative 74. The question, however, is asking for the pathway z to y. The magnitude of the pathway will be the same, 74. However, we will need to change the sign to be positive 74, b. Question 23 is a calculation question. We're starting with 50 centimetres cubed of 0.1 molar ammonia solution. We can work out the number of moles of ammonia present by doing concentration times volume. Remember to turn the volume into litres before you do this. This gives us a number of moles of 0.005. We're then making the solution up to 250 ml, so we can work out the concentration by doing moles divided by volume. Again, turn the, mol the volume into litres before you start. This will give us a concentration of 2 times 10 to the minus 2. Question 24 is the calculation question. We've been told that there's 0.02 moles of silver in the compound. Therefore, we can work out the mass of silver present by doing moles times gram formula mass. This will give a mass of silver of 2.158 grams. Using this with the mass of the precipitate, we can find the mass of the halogen present in the precipitate. This will give a mass of halogen of 0.71 grams. We can then have a look at each of the formulas of the compounds. Each of these is a silver 1 compound, and therefore there is a 1 to 1 ratio between the silver and the halogen that is present. We can therefore take the mass of the halogen and divide by the gram formula mass of each of the halogens in turn. When we find the one that has the moles of 0.02, then we've found the compound. For fluorine, we have 0.71 divided by 19 is 0.04. For chlorine, we have 0.71 divided by 35.5. This gives 0.02. Therefore, silver chloride is the precipitate. Question 25 is looking at the use of appropriate equipment during a titration. If you're trying to add water for the dilution, then a measuring cylinder has a more accurate scale than a beaker. Therefore, we can eliminate answer B and D. During a titration, we always use a conical flask, not a volumetric flask. Therefore, A is the answer. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!